Hi guys, today we're going to do our first assignment, which is going to be a general retouch of a portrait. Uh, you can find the image that we're going to use in Blackboard in this week's co course content. Um, save it to your flash drive and uh, go to your VDI and open up Photoshop. Hit open when in the welcome screen or the open screen. Uh, find your flash drive and find the JPEG image. Open it up. And this is what you'll see. Now this is an untouched image and we're gonna go ahead and do a little retouching. Uh, make her look um, uh, as good as she can and uh, go over some of the basic retouch processes that Photoshop allows us to use. Now, um, this should be sort of self-evident, but uh, most of Photoshop or most fashion, uh, Photoshop um, use in the fashion industry is used toward model uh, pictures. So um, photographs of models and, and such uh, that we want to make look their best. And um, obviously they're used in promotional and advertising uh, images for the brand. And we're gonna just sort of introduce, this will be our first of two retouch assignments and we're going to use just some of our basic uh, retouching skills that, again, Photoshop allows us to. Now, the first thing we're going to do um, is close some of these panes, clear it up a little bit, is we're going to do some general image uh, adjustments. So we're going to head up here to our image window, our image menu, and in it we're going to go over some of the adjustments that we can make. Um, we're going to use some of them, uh, some of them we're not going to use. So just in mode, just so you know, everything should be fine. You shouldn't need to change anything here, but if you did want to, just in subsequent assignments or projects that are your own personal use, you can change the color mode, uh, the channel mode. If you want to take away the image uh, color, you can make it grayscale like that, um, so on and so forth. We're gonna actually go down to here to adjustments and do the bulk of our just overall image ed editing here. Um, so here we have a lot of different options and uh, we're gonna go and we're gonna use mostly these guys up here, but we're gonna take a look at a lot of the, uh, the other ones just so you know what they do um, if you wanna use them. So the First options up here all have to do with the lightness and darkness of the image. Uh, they kind of go in complexity. So this is the most simple one to use, the brightness and the contrast. If you wanna make the image brighter, you simply slide the brightness bar. If you wanna make it darker, you slide it down. And that's an overall to everything, lightens everything, darkens everything. Now the contrast, contrast is the difference between our lightnesses and our darknesses. Um, so if we want a higher contrast image, so brighter brights, darker darks, we slide up the contrast. And as you can see, it darkened her darks and lightened her lights. Um, if we want less, we can, there, and it's a little bit more muted. Now, I had a general rule of thumb, a, a higher contrast will give you a little bit more drama. So depending on you, um, what you're going for, you're typically gonna wanna up the contrast. However, there's no like set rule for anything. It depends on the raw image that you're working with. If the contrast is already good, you can keep it the way it is in your image. If it is too high, you can obviously, if it's true, too dramatic, you can lessen it. Now again, there's no set rule. It's really dependent on your eye and what you're going for with a photo. If you want a sort of softer, nicer image, you might not want that much contrast. If you want a more high drama um, image, you might go ahead and uh, up the contrast. I'm gonna go ahead and up the general contrast um, a little bit, and you can see that's probably what I would do. I'm gonna cancel it for now, um, because what I tend to like to do um, is go and adjust my brightnesses with levels. 
Now levels is kind of in the middle of complexity. This one is just a sliding bar. It's very simple, very easy, very straightforward. Light levels is a little bit more complicated and it allows you to adjust the uh, lightness, darkness, and midtones individually. So if it's a dark image, you can lighten just the darks. If it's a very overexposed or very light um, image, you can adjust just the lightness or just the midtones here. And again, there's no um, set rule for this. It really depends on your eye. But what I'm going to look at is the, what's called the little histogram here. And it's showing the sort of levels of my lights and darks. I don't have much going on over here. Typically, what you're going to want to do is drag your lightness over to the first peak. Now that's going to give us a little bit of a brighter image, okay? It's up those light, those uh, highlights. And again, since I want a little bit of contrast, maybe not as much, I'm going to do that. Now I'm going to adjust the darks and I'm going to make them a little bit darker, not too much. I didn't want quite as much as it is. I wanted to overall kind of lighten the image, but not lose the contrast and not get it washed out. Now over here, I can adjust the midtones, which if I slide it left, I get sort of a generally overall lighter image, but those really dark tones aren't going to be um, touched. Now there's not a lot of, not a lot of um, uh, dark tones in the image to begin with. It's maybe a little bright for me, so I'm going to slide it back over. Now that's looking nice. We're getting a lot of detail, um, a, a lot of nice contrast, so on and so forth. So I'm going to say, Okay. Now already, just by adjusting the lightness, we're going to get a better image. And we can see that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop up my history so I can sort of toggle back and forth to show you what we've done so far and immediately show you kind of what difference it has made. So this was the original image. This was after just adjusting the, the levels. So very quick and easy to... Um, adjust this image and already make it a little bit better, a little bit more attractive. Let's go back to our image adjustments. Now I want to show you just this. Now curves is a much more um, complex uh, way to adjust your lights and darks. And basically it, it looks at the lights and the darks and the shadows based on this scale. And here's that same sort of histogram we had in the levels. And what I can do is I can grab points on this line and start to bend it, and it will sort of adjust the light and the dark. And you can do this, you can set more points, and, and within that level, adjust those specific areas and either intensify them or dim them. Now, curves is kind of a complex thing to use, and it, it gets uh, it takes a bit of practice to, to really um, get what you want and I highly encourage you play around with any of the functions that I use But personally for me, I tend to like to stick to levels It's a little bit more simplistic and I tend to get out of it what I want easier than messing around with the curves So I'm going to cancel what I did here because I certainly don't like it And let's move on now the last part on this uh, is exposure. And exposure is typically how much light is let in by the camera shutter when the uh, picture is taken. So uh, in a lot of sense, what this is going to do and what it's gonna look like it's gonna do is, is just make it brighter or darker. So we can see there, so if I lighten it up, it's going to brighten it, but it's gonna brighten it in a slightly different way than just adjusting that brightness bar. Now this is obviously way overexposed, so I don't want to do that. Um, and again, this is also very similar to the uh, brightness and darkness levels. Um, they're slightly different, but very, very similar. Okay, We're not going to change it too much because I kind of like how it is right now. And let's move on to colors. So that was just lightness and darkness. We can also uh, adjust our colors. So all of these guys, or most all of these guys, are going to um, be in reference to the color of the image. So let's start with vibrance. And again, depending on the sort of image um, and what you're going for with your image, um, you're going to adjust accordingly. As a general rule of thumb, not always applicable, it's nice to up the saturation a little bit. 
uh, tends to make people a little bit more healthier. Um, the, uh, the image becomes a little brighter, more colorful, um, so on and so forth. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep the saturation a little bit up. You don't wanna go crazy because then <laughs> that happens and then we get, <laughs> we don't want her Trump colored. <laughs> but you know, just a little bit. Um, if, if there is a situation where maybe it, it is too colorful, uh, you can lower the saturation. And again, that's gonna be dependent on what you're looking for. If you're looking for something sort of softer, more muted, you don't want the colors to be as impactful, you're gonna lower the saturation. But in this case, ten, people tend to look a little bit better, a little bit more healthier, a little bit more vibrant, if we up that saturation just a little bit, just bump it up. Now, vibrance is very, very similar to saturation. And let's pump it up all the way. And you can see the colors become a little bit more um, intense. A little bit more vibrant and that again too can look very nice so I'm going to up the vibrance just a little bit nothing that looks unnatural um, just a little bit more vibrant make it a little bit more impactful for the viewer now let's look at a little bit more of these um, color uh, options now here in hue saturation, we get the same saturation bar, which I'm not gonna change because I've already altered the saturation. And the lightness, again, you can pretty much tell what it does. It goes ahead and makes it either lighter or darker. Now let's set that back to zero because I've already set the levels for this, so I don't need to change that. Now the hue here is going to change the hue channels. And um, this can be really good if something is not the color that you want it to be because as we go through, we can make things different colors by changing the hue channel. Um, obviously, this is very unnatural when we, do, when we do craziness, but if an image is a little bit too, too yellow or too cool or whatever else, we can adjust this slightly to uh, make it a slightly different um, uh, hue temperature. But really, this sliding bar for here is really good if you just if something is just not the color you want it to be. Now our next stop, I'm actually not gonna change anything there, is color balance. And this allows you to make much more um, specific color amendments. So um, here we can slide three different bars, okay? If something is a little too maybe bluish, we can uh, slide the bar to the red and yellow. If something's a little greenish, like we can we can adjust it. Now overall, it's, she's not too bad. Skin might be a little yellowish. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to very slowly adjust to blue. So now you see it's a little cooler. Her skin isn't quite as yellowish but I don't want her to, to look too pale, so I'm gonna add a little redness to it too. Now the redness, um, typically, especially for most all flesh tones, will again, give it a little bit more of a healthier tone to it, a little bit nicer. So now again, I've adjusted this color balance just a wee bit um, to optimize the color to make it look again uh, uh, a little bit better. So let's say okay. And then now let's go back to our history and just look at the changes that we've done. And again, we haven't done a lot to this image. All we've done is adjust the, uh, the lights and a little bit of the color. So here's where we were. And here's where we are. Okay, big difference, right? Um, and so a lot of, you know, your image adjustments can be made just here. Now let's just round out um, what's in our adjustments because this is pretty much where I like uh, to be. But just so you know what some of these other things are, we'll just take a quick look at them, not all of them. Feel free to go ahead and play around with all of these options um, on your own time. Um, now we can go to photo filter and the photo filter is actually really good if you are um, creating like we'll probably revisit this when we do the mood boards um but what it will do is it will basically put a color like imagine if i was going to put like a um a, a, like a clear uh transparent color 
um, uh, over this. So it's just gonna sort of tint it. So what we have now is a warming filter. So it's basically gonna take this color and it's going to just tinge everything that color a little bit. And the strength of it we can adjust here. So if the more we go up, the more it's going to warm. And you can see the preview there. So if I preview it and we have, you know, it gives it this tone very much. So this is a really good way if you're dealing with lots of multiple images, but you have a very constra uh, constrained color palette that you want everything to fit in with. Um, filters can work to do that. Now we have different filters. We can cool it, we can warm it, we can um, set different colors, or we can set the specific color in our color picker. So if I want everything to be specifically this color or this color, I can go ahead and set that. Okay, let's cancel X, I don't wanna do that. But again, so that's an effect that you can use. Very effective, again, in um, ensuring that everything is going to be the right kind of colors that you want. Very important for, mo for mood boards. Um, the rest of these I'm gonna kind of gloss over because we're not gonna use again. Feel free to um, play around with them, but a lot of these are just sort of inverts, gives you the negative. Oops. Um, a lot of these also too in adjustments. So posterize is just, um, will give you, so it's almost like a filter, um, almost exactly, and kind of does this weird effect. Uh, and you can uh, adjust how posterized or how not posterized it is. Okay, anywho, let's get into a little bit more of the actual uh, stuff that we're gonna do and that is utilized a lot in <clears throat> uh, touching up portraits. So the other thing, uh, now that we've done the colors and the lightness, um, which is a great place to start, what I'd like to do is start to retouch her face. So the first place we're going to start is we're going to just sort of look for any obvious sort of blemishes or things that we can take out. And I'm gonna use um, what's called uh, the healing brush for this. So. You can see right here, it's taking a stain out, but we can also do that to sort of soften any imperfections on the face. And this is good for maybe acne or scars or uh, dark patches or, you know, patchy skin. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at our healing brush. Now the brush uh, itself, the healing brush, has the same presets as our normal brush. So we can adjust the size of it and the um, hardness of it in here. Now this is pretty good um, to start with. You want it to be able to pick up enough from uh, other pixels around because that's how it tells um, itself <laughs> how to fix the image. So let's say we want to maybe take away some of these freckles. Um, not that again, I tend to like freckles, but let's just, you know, see what it does. So on this frexel, we can see that there is um, skin around it. And we do want that surrounding skin because what it does is it matches that surrounding scale. So all uh, that surrounding pixels, those surrounding colors. So I'm just gonna go and, and click around on, on some of these. There's a little bit here. There's a little bit of a scar running down here. So let's just kind of soften that a little bit. Take out maybe a few more of the freckles. Smooth out a little bit. And again, it just sort of smooths out the skin. I like putting concealer on. And, you know, let's, uh, we can take out the um, nose ring too, you know, again, um, say that's not something you particularly wanted, um, but we're too embarrassed to tell the model to take out. <laughs> so there we are. So we've taken out most of our little imperfections just by clicking and using the healing brush. Now the other thing too is we have a little bit of a sort of a bump at the bottom of her lip here. So let's go and see what we can do about that. Now, 
we'll first try, I'm gonna first try the uh, healing brush and I'm just gonna click and drag it all along this bottom. It's okay, but not great. It kind of bled into here. So I'm gonna undo and I'm gonna zoom in. Never be afraid to zoom. And let's see what's really going on here. So it's like a little bit of a bump right here. So let's just sort of click, click, and smooth it out. Smooth out a little bit of that. And that looks better. Maybe a few more of these guys I didn't notice zoomed out. And maybe there's a little kind of a red spot there on the lip. So let's kind of go ahead that's not so let's make that a little bit smaller there if it's too big for the area it can kind of look a little bit weird and that looks pretty good so now let's again let's go back here's where we were here's where we are okay so that's good and especially to maintain our natural look if there's just a little thing that um, we don't like, uh, we can sort of just use that spot healing brush to go ahead and remove. However, there's a more robust method of sm uh, skin smoothing um, that is utilized with Photoshop. And I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. Um, and this is really effective for um, getting rid of like overall wrinkles, or really doing a heavy job on skin smoothing. Um, it can also be used to look, make some kind of dreamy ethereal effects depending on, on how you apply it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop on over to my layers. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hit Control A to select everything. Now we know that there, everything is selected because again, we have those little marching ants marching diligently all around our image. Um, if you don't like uh, keyboard commands, you can always go to select and just select all um, or hit control A just like I did, okay? Now that everything is selected, what I'm gonna do is copy it, control C and paste it, control V. And you can see that our, uh, we now have basically two images layered on top of each other. Now, uh, what I'm gonna do to this layer is I'm going to apply a blur, okay? And this is how we're gonna get that skin smoothing. Um, I'm going to make sure that the layer one is selected and I'm gonna go to filter and I'm gonna apply a blur filter. Now there's a lot of different types of blur filters and you can play around with them. I tend to like the Gaussian blur. Now, once we select the Gaussian blur, we can adjust how blurry we want it. And this is really going to depend on how smooth you want it and you know how much the model really needs it. Um, we can go, uh, uh, well, not that much. <laughs> uh, around here, this would be a very, very smooth finish. Obviously, we're not getting um, anything through that. We're not getting any sort of skin definition. Now, be careful because we're gonna do another sort of step uh, past this and you're gonna sort of balance how much blur to how much you reduce the opacity of this level, which is the next step. I'm gonna go around here and you might say, oh, that's too blurry, but wait, hold on. Because the next thing that we're going to do is I'm going to lower the opacity of this um, uh, layer. So basically it's going to have this sort of blurred layer and we're gonna to start to add in some of the more refined detail from the this layer, which has been unblurred. It's, it's not been blurred, there's been no effect to it. So I'm gonna go down and there we are. So I can adjust if I want, again, more sharpness and clarity, I can reduce the opacity further to get a much more subtle um, uh, blur effect but let's go up because I want, maybe some of those, you know, can't have poor showing in magazines because God forbid we look human in a fashion magazine. So here we are, I'm gonna stop about this layer because it's getting, it's smoothing out most of her skin. And again, you can also see that we're kind of getting this dreamlike ethereal effect. 
And if that's something that you like, um, you can adjust your opacity, adjust your blur levels to go ahead and match what you really would like it to look like. Well, maybe a little bit less, about right there. Um, and again, this is doing a nice job uh, blurring out uh, a lot of those, you know, just really small imperfections and giving a nice sort of smooth, um, uh, uh, bright skin uh, effect. <clears throat> now you might say, well, sure, but look, still it just looks like a blurry image aha well there's another step so we are applying this blur layer to smooth out her skin but i don't really want a lot of these details to be blurred i don't want her eyes to be blurred uh, she's wearing jewelry i don't want the jewelry to be blurred um so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to pop on over to my polygon lasso tool and i'm going to go in and i'm going to select all the areas that I want to remain in high definition. So places like the eyes, so there we are. So again, I'm ensuring that layer one is selected because what I want to do is I want to delete out the blur layer. Um, by selecting this blur layer, and then once this area is selected, I'm gonna hit delete, and we get a nice, crisp clean that we get from the uh, background image. Now I'm gonna do the other eye, and we'll zoom out, and we'll see the overall effect. Actually, you know what I should have done? I'm sorry about that. I'm gonna undo uh, and go back, because I should have, ah, blah, blah, blah. what am I doing? Ah, making all kinds of crazy selections. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna go back to, <laughs> before this, what I should have done, and excuse me, because you might have noticed that that was a bit choppy. It was a bit choppy from the blur to the um, uh, actual layer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to feather the selection, and this will make it look much less choppy. Well, let's start with about five pixels, see what that looks like going to soften that selection and make it a lot less noticeable. Okay, there we are. Control D is your shortcut to deselect. See, as you can see, it's not choppy. It's a very soft transition and you might, well, the idea is that you don't even know that it's edited. Everything's edited though, by the way. It's important to know that. I mean, you guys probably do know that because you you know about filters and everything like that. Um, oops, I was not ready to finish that. But I mean, it's. I think it is really important for people to know, especially people that like to read fashion magazines or any magazine or any, you know, consume media that um, we're so rarely presented with authentic images of people. Um, it can make us sometimes feel bad about our, our own faces and bodies and things like that. Um, but really just know, um, again, you as I said, you probably do know that there's so much of this Photoshop and so much editing that goes on within the fashion industry and all media that again, you know, just be skeptical. Now I also might wanna go ahead and give a little bit more definition to our eyebrows especially these down here getting a little blurry. Now softening the edges are not too bad, so I'm gonna keep it kinda on the inside. But a little bit more definition to the eyebrows. And again, I'll zoom out so you can see the full effect. And what it's gonna do is it's going to leave those areas of definition nice and crisp while also uh, utilizing the nice softness of the um, blur layer that we just did. So control D and then I'm gonna zoom out and you can start to see the effect. Um, I'm gonna do this a few other places, again, because I do like to maintain that crispness. Uh, you might wanna do it on the hair, especially hairline. The uh, blur effect 
Uh, looks really nice. It's good for sort of taking away fl flyaways. Actually, so is the healing brush. Let's actually go ahead. I'm gonna make a little bigger and maybe just get away some of those flyaways. Clean up. I always wondered how the models can have such perfect no flyaways. I always had so many flyaways. Well, they're edited away. Maybe take away this one. Now you can see it's not doing the best job. So what I'm gonna do actually is I'm gonna utilize this clone stamp tool. So what the clone stamp tool, oh, probably because I'm also on the background. Let's do the background too. All right, all right. Um, the clone stamp will go ahead and take part of the image and then um, paste it down. And we're gonna utilize this a little bit more later on. So I'll get more into it just to take away that little fly away. Okay, it's gone. Okay, so let's go back to what we were doing. Go back to layer one and um, I want to zoom in on some other areas of definition. Maybe the bottom of the nose. Because again, the more that we leave defined, the less it looks like we used a blur filter to smooth her skin. And let's of course do the lips as well. Now, if you like, no, so maybe somewhere in between um, that blur and these lips, it was good for you. A little bit of blur actually was uh, kind of nice on the lips. Now, if you like just sort of certain areas, if you want to um, blur just certain areas, you can use the blur tool. And the strength is up here if it's a little bit strong for you. But let's say I want to go ahead and, and maybe just apply a wee bit, just, just to soften the lips. Not too much, but just soften what's going on here. Oh, let's make sure I'm on the background or else I'm not going to do anything. Just soften a bit. Not as much as the other one, but just a bit. A little bit. What we can also do, too, is... I should have stuck with that lip selection. While I'm on the background, just going to quick redo our lip selection. So remember that once we have something selection, selected, the adjustments that we make will only apply to that selection. So let's say I kind of want a little bit more saturation just on the lips. I can go to back to my hue saturation and make the lips a little bit more colorful. And if the lip color is not what I want, I can go ahead and make it something different. Now, to put on like maybe a little bit of saturating lip gloss. Um, again, sort of uh, a pretty much still just the natural um, color of her lips, but I just adjusted the hue channel slightly different. But of course, if you want to maybe put like a lipstick color or something else, you can do that. Or you can even paint it with the paintbrush. Um, so here we are. I'm going to go ahead, go back to my history, and let's take a look at our, our edited uh, picture now. So here we are. This is the original image. And now let's look at it with all of our select um, uh, additions. Pretty good, still a little blurry in areas. So what I'm gonna do is again, again, if you want it soft, a lot of times you'll keep a lot of this blur. If you like the soft image, it depends on what you like. It depends on what you're going for. Um, but again, if you really do want an image that really just looks like the skin is soft and you haven't used that blur, you're really gonna want to define all those areas. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just the edges of her face, I'm going to select to take away the blur. And you'll see it, it'll give the chin and the edges a lot more definition. So let's go there. And again, I wanna make sure that my blur layer is selected. That's what I'm deleting from. And we'll delete from right there, okay? Pretty nice and sharp, right? Now it's really getting to the point where you can really barely even tell that I use that blur. I forgot this little area over here, so let's go ahead and define that. Okay, not bad. Again, you might want to do a little bit of the hairline too. I like to keep the blur in the hair because it makes it sort of soft and smooth and looks a little bit even fluffier. But again, I'm going to go ahead and maybe just give it a little bit more definition. Let's see what it looks like. Oops. Okay, pretty good. Um, so here we are. This is a pretty good uh, um, evolution. Uh, we can really stop here if we want, if we're, if we're going for just a sort of natural, and especially if, if someone really wants, you know, something very representative of them. Um, but again, if we are using it for fashion, we might go further from here uh, because there are additional things that we can do to an image um, depending on how we want it to look uh, for whatever fashion shoot or whatever else we want. Now she's not wearing any makeup, but we can apply makeup um, using Photoshop. And I'm gonna go into that a little bit. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a different layer and I'm gonna go ahead and lock these original layers. Background is already locked. And I'm gonna apply the makeup here. So again, I can always take it off or put it back on or change it, um, toggle it, see what it looks like. Um, and this is again, one of the ways that we utilize layers um, in our, um, uh, in Photoshop. So just overlooking, she has a little bit of asymmetrical eyebrows. Um, and really, uh, what they found is, um, symmetry in faces is really important for sort of the, I guess the classical textbook sense of, of, of beauty. So we can go ahead and we can try to fix her eyebrows a little bit. So I can notice this is maybe a little, we have like a little dip, this might be a little bit big. So there's a couple things that we can do. I use that clone stamp tool again. I actually need to do this on the background. So sorry about that. Um, and the way we utilize the um, clone stamp tool, like I said, is it will sample a certain part of our image and um, it will then print that part of our image um, wherever we would like it to, wherever we tell it to. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm so, I have the clone stamp tool selected and I'm gonna hold down the Alt key and it gets to this like bullseye and this is gonna be our target range to select. So I'm just gonna select like right here underneath and click, okay? Now this area is selected and I know that because once I move out, those pixels come with me. And what I'm gonna do is I'm pretty much just going to fill the eyebrow a little bit here. Which will make it a little bit more full there. And I can do um, the same thing right here too if I wanna bring this down a little bit. So start to just kind of even it out. And um, whatever, oh, maybe just a little, oh, right like that. Um, maybe should have saw, okay, hardness, sorry. If that's a bit. Now if it's a little blurry there, what we can do is we can always go back with our blur tool. Oh, that's big. And just kind of smooth it out by blurring it a little bit. So we've just sort of adjusted the eyebrow a little bit over there, um, uh, fixing that dip. We can do the same thing over here if we want to um, bring it out a little bit here. I think the best 
best place to fill it out. Maybe just a little bit underneath there. Now what you can also do is you can just copy this and paste it over here if you want it perfectly symmetrical. Might be a little bit much. Maybe we'll do something like that in the next. So same thing. Hold on. Got the clone stamp utilized. Um, I'm gonna, oh, let's maybe just small, make the brush a little bit smaller. I'm gonna select just, just right here. And then just maybe make it a little bit more full right there. Ooh, that last bit I did was a little off, so I'm gonna just And again, we can smooth it out um, with our blur or even the smudge tool. Actually, smudge tool might work a little bit better right here. So I'm just going to smooth it out a little bit right there. Oh, need a bit stronger strength. Okay. So a little bit, little bit touch, touch up. Um, again, like I said, if you want it perfectly symmetrical, this looks fairly natural and, and, and okay. But again, depending on exactly what you're going for, if you're going for something super symmetrical, um, you can actually take this whole thing, copy it, reverse it, and put it here. Um, I'm going to show you how to do that. I might not utilize it, but I'm going to show you how to do it anyhow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this eyebrow. I'm going to copy it, I'm going to paste it, take it, reflect it, and it's a little dim because it's behind our um, blur layer, so I'm going to drag it up, so there we are, oops, I thought I reflected, anyways, so, um, We can, um, since my little bars aren't working the way they want them to, I'm just going to go here and flip vertical. That's saying I'm flipping it over a vertical line. Oh, wait, come on. Come on now. There we are. <laughs> and I can put it here. Now, I'm going to have some issues. This is not the best. Uh, this is very difficult to do, so I'm not going to recommend it. I just wanted to show you you could do it because there's going to be a lot of cleanup work. And most of the cleanup work is going to be getting uh, the shadows correct. So here we are, you're gonna do that and let's just click off it so you can see it. It's not great as it is. Um, why not? What's the main problem? Well, we have this kind of like halo around here. So I need to darken it over here. So um, what I would do is use the dot, or sorry, the burn tool on layer three specifically to just darken these areas around here to make it blend in a little bit better with those shadows. And I can also clean up the selection, so a lot of that is just lighter areas. Okay, and then uh, I might wanna take, let me see if this is start a little bit closer here. I need to clean this area up as well. Let's put a little burn in here just the shadows, so on and so forth. Um, but again, it's giving us a more symmetrical eyebrow uh, look. So let's now go back to the background and let's clean up that area right there. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this skin and just take away, make the eyebrows start a little bit closer to where they were. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a, like a little bit, this just this little area here that's a little bit light, I'm going to take it out of this layer so the bottom layer comes through a little bit better. Oops. Oh, that's no good. I'll fix it with a clone stamp tool. Just to get that little light part out. Okay, so there we are. Let's zoom out. Still a little wonky. Again, I'll have to go back and clean it up a little bit more using my adjustment tools, uh, but I wanted to show you that, that it's something that you can do. But again, this is what's also nice about Photoshop is I can say, you know what, that didn't work. I liked it better before. Let's just get rid of it. Um, and then let's go back and Where I was before. Right about there. And let's just get rid of that and keep it the way it was. I think it looks better anyways. And it was less cleanup work to do. Um, as you get into it, sometimes there is a lot of cleanup work to do. So again, play around with it if you want. But again, I don't think our eyebrows are that bad. We did a little bit of adjustment there. So uh, let's move on down to the eyes. And uh, again, she's not wearing any makeup. So let's just take a look at some of the things that we can do. Um, I'm going to zoom in so we get a nice sort of look. Now what I want to do is, the first thing I might want to do is, um, maybe you want the, the color of the eyes to really pop out and show. So along with our burn tool, we have that, uh, we have a sponge tool. And what the sponge tool does is it will either uh, saturate or desaturate depending on what you set it to. So let's set it to saturate and let's try to like really bring out that color in her eyes. So what I'm doing is just, just a spot saturation. This will make that her, her eye color stand out more and more vividly. I'm gonna do it equally to both eyes. Obviously you don't want one different color than the other. Or maybe you do, I don't know. Go ahead, if it, it, it can sometimes look a little bit eerie or uncanny, but if it's what you like, it's what you like. Um, and you can also change the color of the eyes if you want by either brushing in a new color or just applying that, remember that filter I showed you, but just apply it in that selected area. So you'll sec select the um, area and change it. Um, eh, no need to change the color here, um, but let's take a look at some of the other things that we can do. Let's say, oh, you know what? She needs a little bit of eyeliner. So what we can do is um, any makeup, like eyeliner, eyelashes, or anything like that, or blush, or whatever, I like to do it on the other layer like I was talking about. So we can see what it looks like with and without. So I'm gonna go to that layer two, and I'm gonna um, flip to a brush, and choose a very small size of brush, maybe one pixel or two pixel, and I'm gonna make it a little bit soft. Let's get really nice and close in there so it's nice and easy for us. And what I can do, now I can set the color to the brush, um, whatever color you want. You know, let's let's try for a black color, obviously. Um, but you can do any color you want. If you want to apply eyeshadow or whatever else, you can do whatever color. So let's say, okay, so we have a nice black color and maybe a little bit, little bit um, bigger than that. So let's give her eyeliner first. Oh, way too big. See, that's good. 
And I, what I'm gonna do is I'm make sure your opacity is not at 100, because that's gonna look too harsh. I want this to sort of blend in. And uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and put a little bit of this color just to mimic what would be done with like an with an eyeliner. Do the same thing down here. And this, of course, just like regular eyeliner, will give um, a little bit of definition to the eyes. I like to use kind of short strokes, especially using kind of the mouse that allows you to, if you, if you do make a small mistake, you can erase just the small mistake. A little bit right in there. Weep. Okay, so um, I'm gonna zoom out and we're gonna take a look at it. Maybe right in that corner a little bit more. A little bit of a, just darken that. So now she has a little bit of eyeliner and you can see the difference here. And again, I can toggle this on and off. So I can really determine if I made an improvement or if I just messed it up. Um, and if I don't like it, I can just get rid of the layer and continue on. Um, it's fine, let's do the other eye. Now this eye has a little bit more lightness to it. So this was a little bit more in shadow, so you can see it's standing out a little bit more. Now what that might mean is I might have to reduce the opacity further to get a more natural effect. But we'll see, we'll see what it looks like. Short strokes, and you can erase just a little bit that you messed up on. Smooth this out here and zoom out and see what it looks like. Not too bad. And again, without, with just a little bit of eyeliner. Now, if we want to go ahead and maybe we want a little bit more eyelash, we can go in and we can draw eyelashes too. You can even, um, if you want to go crazy, um, apply eyelashes from an, another image. So if you want something much more dramatic, let's go ahead and find an image and then use that as a select uh, selected image. So this is very dramatic here. This might be good to use. Let's try this one. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually um, go new. Now what I did is I copied that image and what Photoshop does is it reads your clipboard and this little uh, prompt it's giving me here is the exact size and resolution of that image that I have now put on my clipboard. So I'm gonna open that. And we have two uh, images open right now. We have our original image here that we're working on and this one, I'm gonna paste in that. I'm going to show you, this is a little bit more advanced, and again, not necessary, but again, I like to show you as much as, as I can. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select based on a color range. And I want to select just the black. Okay, now it's still going to give us the eye, but we'll, we'll adjust that to begin with. So let me do something... Just like that, okay? 
Okay. Well, maybe not. It's not getting all the uh, range of those eyelashes that I want. So let's try again. Deselect. Color range. There we go. Okay. It's a good start. Let's just see. Yeah. Won't be quite as big or dramatic, but we can always adjust that, that fuzziness to include more. Now what I want to do is I want to get rid of a lot of what's selected here. So I'm going to go to the back to the polygon lasso tool and then I'm going to subtract from selection because I just want the eyelashes. And I'm going to just select around here because you see the whole eye uh, iris has been selected. So I'm going to include that, and now it's gone. Uh, there's little bits up here that I don't really want, and obviously this part of the hair I don't really want. So let's get rid of that. Okay. So now what I have is I have these eyelashes, so what I can do is I can copy them, and then paste them into here, okay? So um, it's gonna be a little tricky because obviously the eye shape is different. Um, and this is another one of those things that if you're gonna do it, there's a lot of touch up work that's gonna be doing it needed to make it look natural. So um, I'm gonna grab my, those eyes were rounder, so I'm gonna flatten it out a little bit and obviously make it smaller. Let's zoom in now. And I want to lower the opacity of this to make it blend a little better. And then let's set it over the eye. And continue to size it so it fits a little bit better. Still not fitting quite like I'd like it to. But it's getting there now. So we're getting it there. Um, there's a little bit of lines here, so we can always, again, like I said, clean up, clean up, clean up. This part's going out a little bit more, so I'm gonna just select out areas that I don't want. Now I'm going to do some pretty fine work. Let's try to get rid of this little line a little bit more. I don't really like that. So again, tiny little cleanup work, tiny little cleanup work. Always necessary, unfortunately, depending on what you want to do. we don't have to do it to the other side because I can just do that copy and transform thing I did before. All right, it's not too bad. So there we are. Now she has dramatic eyelashes. Uh, it's not particularly a look that I think is that great, but again, depends on your preference, depends on how heavily made up you want. Maybe you don't like the distribution of eyelashes. You can always pick a different eyelash style or whatever else. I just want to show you what you can do. Um, and here's what you, this is obviously something that you could do. Um, just copy and paste for the other side and then right click, sorry. Um, not popping up 
like I wanted it to. You can go ahead and, um, sorry, I'm having a, a blank for the uh, transformation. As soon as I do it, it does it. But I didn't want it to do it then. Let's flip it vertical. And size it to this eyes. Now, um, aside from the fact that it didn't do what I wanted it to, <laughs> we're going to have to size it. Now, everyone's eyes are going to be slightly different shaped. So you are going to have to sort of resize it a little bit and reshape it just to adjust to um, the differences between people's, people's eyes. Let's see what that looks like. Again, I'm not I'm not wild about it. I probably would not uh, would leave it out. Um, a little bit more natural on this side. Maybe that means we should take this in a little bit, and make it a little bit smaller. Not so dramatic. Crazy go nuts dramatic. That looks better. More natural. Less crazy good odds. Okay. And the same thing, you can do it with the lips. You can put some lipstick on, whatever else. You can put eyeshadow on, whatever else. Um, maybe put on, I think the last thing I'm going to do is, is maybe a little bit of bl blush, just so we can uh, look at that. And again, I'm going to do it on a separate layer, so if I don't like it, I can take it out. Um, and I can also toggle it on and off to see what I like about it, what I don't like about it. So I'm going to grab my brush. I'm going to go ahead and make it pretty, pretty big, make it nice and soft. Because, um, of course, we want it kind of nice and soft. Um, and, of course, I'm going to keep it at a nice low opacity. What I find is nice for blush is to use um, a color that is from the skin. So I'm just going to pop over here. I'm actually going to use this color of her lips for the blush. Um, and it'll make everything sort of blend a little bit better. And we can go ahead and um, I'm going to start an even lower opacity uh, for the brush and just maybe a little bit of color in the cheeks. Ah, that's too much. Don't like it? Trash it. What wasn't good about it? I don't know. Maybe the opacity. Let's even lower it. Um, what you can do too is not only can you lower the opacity of the um, brush, okay, oh I should be doing this on, you can lower the whole opacity of the layer that you're working on as well. And then what you can do is, is you can increase it if you want it to be stronger. So this should be just barely noticeable, yep. And then just a little bit around there. And then we can slowly bring up that opacity until it gets to the point that we want. Now I did a little bit over on her hair. I wasn't being very careful. I guess I'm getting tired. Um, and I think it should be softer. I'm gonna lower that opacity back down there. And let's try again. Be a little less messy. Cause I just want a little color right in here. Just a little bit. I think maybe I should have softened the brush too a little bit. But, um, okay, so let's bring up our opacity. A little bit of color there. Again, what I can do if I want it to sort of blend a little bit better, I can go back to that smudge tool. And kind of smudge it in. To blend it a little bit better.
just a little bit of color. That's actually nice. Just natural. And then again, if I like that, copy and paste. And I guess I actually have to start the transform before it lets me flip it. I know it doesn't look like it did anything because it's almost invisible, but see, just that little redness. We'll just put a little bit of that color right in there. And again, we can put it where we want. Not a lot, just a little bit. If you want a more, more color in the blush, you can go ahead and put more color in the blush. But for right now, I'm going to call that a retouch photo. There we are. Um, let's do our final check, just to let you know. I don't know where my history window went, but of course we can always find it in our Windows menu. Um, here we are. Here's where we started. Here's where we're ending. Okay, so um, this is what you're going to do. You don't have to use every single technique that I used. Um, it's going to be up to you, but do know that, you know, I'm, I want a natural look. I, I, I don't want to necessarily know that it was uh, edited heavily by Photoshop. Um, so again, try to make it look, um, you know, obviously the makeup is not necessarily natural, but it, it might look like she's actually wearing makeup. So try to make it, try to uh, make sure that your colors are, are positive. Um, it, it doesn't need, again, does not need to look like this if you want to give her a different lip color or you want to do some eyeshadow or you want to do something different um, go for it but at the end of the day uh, what I'm going to be looking at is um, overall um, I guess naturalness like I, I don't want to necessarily know that it's been edited um, I don't want it to look too bizarre too out there so um, let that guide you. Again, you don't have to do exactly what I did. Um, uh, you can make your own adjustments, play around with it your own self. Um, but at the end of the day, I want something that looks good. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. <laughs> okay, so um, once you're done, this is what you're going to do. You're going to go to File, Save As. Okay? Now you're going to uh, change the name to your name, uh, uh, what are we going to call this, um, retouch one. So your name, retouch one, and, and save it as a JPEG, okay? So um, your name, retouch, be sure to save it to your um, flash drive, especially, especially, especially if you're working with a remote desktop system, because again, you can't save to the computer, you must save to your flash drive. So save it to your flash drive. Uh, again, name it your name, retouch one, save it as a JPEG, and that's how you're going to hand it in. Um, after you hit save on the save as menu, um, some JPEG options are going to pop up. You're going to want maximum. And baseline standard is fine and hit OK it's saved it's saved as a JPEG now let me um, since we haven't really gone over saving so this is when you're done because um, I'm going to require that you submit this as a JPEG file format however if you're in the middle of this and, and you have the stop and you want to save and then go back to what you're working on what you're gonna want to do is um, save as and save as a Photoshop document. Um, what's the difference? Well, the JPEG is just an image. Um, the Photoshop is going to save all of your layers, all, all um, your different like selection items. So if you've put something in, um, uh, you're gonna have all those layers pop up the same. You're, you'll be able to do the same things with them. So when you're working on a Photoshop image and you are not done with it and you intend to continue to go back to it, um, be sure to save as a Photoshop document. When you are completed with the image, then you can choose whatever file type you like. In this instance, you're going to choose .jpeg because that's what I'm going to require the finished image be submitted as. 
Alrighty guys, I um, hope you learned something today, a couple neat tips and tricks. Maybe you're going to go back and uh, update the pictures for your Tinder profile or whatnot. <laughs> but um, uh, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.